Oh, they'll be calling you a radical, you know, write a book. Published. Come on. Come on. Get with the freaking program, man. So, I want to talk about this. The number one school business in the United States right here. This is it. Pop, pop, nuclear. Eowattis Business School. Who's Eowattis? He died of leukemia, by the way. So, from first to worst, the number one school business in the United States. What? Yes. Number one, beating Harvard, beating Wharton, beating Yale, all the Ivy Leaguers. We're just killing it. And so, I'm the student professor here. I'm being prepped to take over Clyde Cooley's legendary program. The most famous professor in the history of Utah. The most, fam the most famous finance professor in the country, bar none. And before I forget, you know, because I, I went to Wall Street, everybody that graduated here went to Wall Street. One of the guys that was, you know, because I, I uh, taught the derivative arb class, and so I hedged portfolios. You know, all I did was buy high dividend yield stocks and roll puts underneath them. You know, my contemporary, who I know, I did know, whose grandson who managed the Harvard Endowment, famous because he always returned 8.5%. He always beat, you know, he always was ahead. You see, he died of leukemia. Yeah, you know, the other big hedge fund guy here in Salt Lake, who I knew from here, died of cancer. I mean, it's, and I knew that, I remember a guy telling me when I was young, Kevin, you know, the Wall Street crowd, the derivative crowd, well, I says, they die young. Yeah, I do know that. So, I want to talk about this. How Warren Buffett stole this school of business. Now, I was the young professor here, student professor. You know, I taught with Matt Godfrey. He taught here. He was a student professor here for a while. He had the mayor. Boom. Don't get me going. So, the legendary finance professor, Clyde Cooley, he was tough, man. I remember our, there was 17 of us in the, the year that I graduated, I still have my shirt, 96, with a BA, there were 17 of us, including the heirs of the Japanese royal family, humanity system. They, they were incredible. 17 of us. You know what he started out with? Well over 400. He was vicious. He graded on the curve? Oh, yeah. Big time. You weren't getting no A's in his class. I mean, I got some A's, but, oh, God, he was brutal. He was brutal, but... So, you can see the date. John Goddard, who I knew really personally, he never went to school here. Great guy. I did all his classwork on his buildings over there. I was friends with him. He never went to college. I don't even know what was in that. That's Warren Buff signed that. Limited pricing. That's his signature. Is the alternative. Oh, God. That's it. Pop it open and break it. Are you kidding? That just happened. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll fix it. I don't think I've even opened it. Since. So... So, a famous picture that's right here, Lee, he rolls here in 98. So, we're the number one school business for a decade, all through the number one every year. We're beating Wharton. Wharton becomes our sister school. Elaine Muss is at Wharton at the time. The number one exit scores in the history of business schools to this day or the Weber State class of 96, my class. Now, in those days, to become a certain level of a graduate student, because we didn't have an MBA pro, you were required to teach, which I did. And so I taught the derivative of our class. Uh, it's always something with me. 
So Mike Vaughn's the dean here, but it was really Clyde Cooley School, Clyde Cooley School. Dr. Chi, get through those classes. Oh, oh, oh holy shit, statistics, whatever. I have the highest score, this is Clyde Cooley. No, Clyde Cooley, because I had, I was a plaster then. I don't want plastering too. And I was on Wall Street. So you have a Wall Street job. You have a sidewalk pass. All the class work on all these cement overheads. It's me. He says, fuck, you go to class, you come out of class, there you are up on a scaffold with a hawk and trial. Yeah, I can do a lot of things. Remember my French friend. He's still around, Dr. Godfrey. Escape Because you had to have a foreign language, right? You get a BA. So I was a BIS guy, early BIS, which was an honors program, which so I took biology. Fine art and finance. The only one in the history of this school. So, I mean, talk about diverse. And that's back when you didn't get straight A's. People didn't get straight A's. People didn't want straight A's. I mean, so what happened? So in the 90s, we are raging. We're killing it. How can a public entity be beating the shit out of the private institutions? And so lots of guys from here guys and girls, went to Wall Street. I mean, you graduated from Clyde Cooley's program. They used to call it the golden ticket around here. I the last letter of recommendation he ever wrote. It's in those special collections library. I gave it to them, which I'll probably give them that, you know, because they're going all digital with it. You know, they'll digitalize it. So maybe. Anyway, so we've become the number one school business in the country. For a decade, via the testing, not opinion, not no boy, it's this international students from all over the world flocking in here. They know, they know they are on it. And so, in the late 90s, about 98, here comes Lee, these Chinese professors, they get hired here into IT. Then all of a sudden, through the Utah State Legislature, there's a political theater going along. By the way, this is brand new cement, so you know. They just poured that and re it out, because it didn't work. Well, that's all they do around here, the greenwashing you. And believe me, I taught the freaking environmental economics class there. Brand new cement. This is brand new, this was all groomed, done. I video why they're doing the underground. This is all built on a wetland. And that's what they do here. They pour it, they tear it out. They pour it, they tear it out. They pour it, they tear it out. And so it's non-stop around here. Concrete makes a giant footprint. So my classroom right there, right below here. So I knew David O. McKay personally when I was a kid. Education building being gutted. So this is an important video. So, I would always use that door down there for all those years. So, we don't have an MBA program. There's a law between the Utah State Legislature, these are state universities that Utah State has on there. They used to do a satellite program through here. And so, I graduate in 96. I'm already got a Wall Street job. I already own Blanche Plastering. I'm doing multiple things. I'm very dynamic. I, I used to walk around, I mean, I made a lot of money on both. I mean, I was hands-on, I started plastering at 16 years old. New descending down staircase. Oh boy. So I'd always go in this door here. Back in those days, so you know at Weber State, if you got a ticket, oh, I had so many tickets. Or there were the climbing centers now, which is a clown, so it's a joke. They had a judge that would come in there once a month. That's how we're here. That's how we got sold the supply chain with those jets. Are you kidding me? So, that's how they sold it to us through Hillfield. It was a very different getting degrees from universities in those days than it is now. Very different when they adopted the high school. So we're the number one school business in the United States. 
bar none. Every single year. I remember being on Wall Street and a guy called me over one time. And he's like, hey, I understand you're Weber State. Yeah. He says, oh my God, that's become this incredible, like, boutique thinkers academia school. Now, in 99, I'm on Wall Street, do my gig, plastering, and they announced Clyde Cooley has lobbied inside the Utah State Legislature for an MBA program. Well, they're the number one school business in the country, nine years in a row. They got to give it to them. They get it. So I tell my boss, well, I got to get that MBA from Dr. Kuhl. I remember when they interviewed me right here for my job on Wall Street. And I freelance. He says, you got 30 seconds to tell me about yourself. Nice to it up. They interviewed 300 people, but I didn't know this. I know it now. The deal was already done. Clyde Cooley got me the job. He's like, no, this guy. You know, so I was good at what I did, really good at what I did. Made a lot of money, and I protected a lot of portfolios, very responsible. I used to do uh, lots of charitable work, including the lung associations and everything. We used to, you know, protect their money. It was just basically buying insurance policies through the derivatives market. I taught that class here. So they lobbied legislature, legislature gives them an MBA. I says, I got to get that first MBA. So I'm jet setting around all over. So I keep calling the secretary here. I'm friends with her. Is there anybody with the letter A here? Right. No, nobody with A yet, Kevin. Only that few of you. There isn't that many. B, my first? Yeah, you're first. So I wanted that first MBA. I knew what that was going to be worth. So I walk into class in 99, September 99. There's a guy named Tom. I don't know him from out. I'm like, where's Clay? This is his class. It's his program. Oh, haven't you heard? Heard what? This is two weeks before we get the NBA. Now, what's the odds? Two weeks, the number one finder, and ethics out the in game, protectionist. He was a pro tariff guy, just like they were at Wharton. He was an anti big time maiden in the United States protectionist. He was a big balance sheet. He was a big, he was like the most anti debt person you ever. He used to do lecture after lecture about stay out of debt, stay out of debt. He thought it was important for the United States government to completely stay out of debt. I mean, he was something. He was vicious. He was tough. He was a fucking genius. I remember, he'd, he'd call these spot tests. And everybody around here would say, oh, God, Clyde's got his green jacket on. We'd call it his master's jacket. He would kind of forward stuff. He would give you little hints and stuff. He's got his green jacket on. You know what's happening. Oh, boy. He'd pop them on you. And it wasn't some just, it was in class. It wasn't in the testing center. It was like, I remember, walk up. And I was excellent at oral presentations. And he would say, he was all about it. One, uh, one thought was a full grade cut. All right, Mr. Blanche, your time in the barrel. And he would sit right across you on his podium. And you're sitting at your podium. And he would grill you. He would give you a corporate scenario and just grill you. And then you would have to present like he was the board. Oh, it's vicious. I mean, the toughest class on this campus, bar none. And trust me, I had lots of tough breaking classes. So, the MBA, I'm like, well, where's Clyde? Two weeks before a virus attacks his brain. Mad cow, most likely. Out of nowhere. So, Alma Harris finds a relative of his, Kyle Madsen, who's been teaching at the University of Syracuse in New York, from here. He's taking over the program. He's in way over his head. He knows he's in over his head. And he's like, Kevin, you know, so lots of things start being talked about around here. What are we going to do? They're in panic. They got nobody can teach it. It's his program. I mean, nobody could teach his. Well, everybody knew I was his protege. So Kyle's like, you got to help me teach this class. I have an MBA. 
No, you got to do it. We'll make, they made this promise, this promise, this promise. So, meantime, two years earlier, the year earlier, they'd been politicking the state of Utah to let supply chain. This is an economics and finance powerhouse, number one in the country. Be the test for year after year after year after year after year. Public school beating private. I remember Paul Thompson in 99 when he fired Coach Beglin. And basketball metaphors matter. I mean, he's talking to me, and I'm like, I'm up there. Well, I had breakfast with him the morning he fired him in Seattle. And they beat North Carolina. He says, no, Kevin, we're going to be the Ivy League of public schools. I said, what do you mean going to be? We already are. We're the number one school business in the country. Probably the number one engineering. We're the number one nursing. We already are. You know, don't mess this up. But Utah is legislating hard, the state of Utah. Through the state legislature, they want the supply chain through China. Clyde Cooley would have none of it. Oh, hell, no way. Ain't going to happen when he's in the way. Bingo, bango, bango, magically he's dead. So, very interesting, right? Hmm. So, Okay, I agree to do it. I'll help for the first MBA. You give me the first MBA, give me this perk, give me this perk. You know, I had plenty of money. I didn't give a fuck about money, man. I had tons of money. And, uh, I mean, that great big house I built, remember, on West Weaver in that era? That incre- I built it with cash. I remember when the Will Wright Lumber, you can go ask him, come out. Well, who's the bank? There's no bank financing. Bring a suitcase. And the lumber pile guy says, here, paid him in cash. By the way, he got fired because he ripped off. I knew he was going to rip off part of the cash. So don't steal part of it. They'll catch you. Because I'm telling them, because I took photographs of the cash. Oh, he, he couldn't help himself. He ripped some of it off. And anyway, what an era. So, out of nowhere, so I used to tell Lee, who that picture, AP's got a big article out right now showing Chinese influence, FBI investigation, which has been going on for years. I've been feeding them all kinds of shit for years. Photograph right there. I bet I was telling Lee back then, just joking. What'd you put in Clyde Cooley's tea? Yeah. I think it's a joke now. So I'm running the NBA. So we have lots of Saudi kids here. We have lots of rich international kids. It's the number one school business in the country. Rich elite kids all over in here, and it's a beast to get through. So I'm teaching the investment class. I'm teaching the derivative arbitrage class. Now, remember, this is the number one school business in the country, 99, 2000. So Buffett, who I never liked, he, we get to go to his VIP meeting. So they invite me, Blanche, Dr. Ron, and uh, the dean here, and all these people are like, I'm running the show. Come on, you got to go with us to the Berkshire shareholder meeting. Well, this is right when the market had capitulated on the Palm 3Com deal in March of, again, March 11th, I believe it was, 2020. Whoa, what a date. Everything happens on that. I was part of that group, and I knew how corrupt that was. The Palm 3Com deal was so corrupt, you know, it was unbelievable, and I knew it. And uh, so the CPI was coming. We did the CPI for the sake of the PPI. We did it. I would always forecast it. And I remember Kyle Madsen saying, I've never seen you get it wrong. And then Dr. Vaughn says, I've never seen you get it wrong. You got it wrong this time. He says, Greenspan was going to raise. I says, no, I didn't get it wrong. I didn't say that. I says, inflation's starting to rear its head. We know who got it wrong. Greenspan got it wrong. Slashing rates when he should have been raising. And Cooley was a big anti-inflation guy. I mean, hardcore. I mean, this guy was vicious. He was the best. He was... I mean, his average grade, I think, was a D plus. So, they invite me. I fly on Bill Childs. Now, Bill Childs owned R.C. Willys. Bill Childs sold R.C. Willys to Warren Buffett. So, I fly in his Learjet, go back. So, Buffett starts to make a big deal about us, we were saying, because we're the number one school business. So we get invited to his private party. Now, if you go to the shareholder meeting, you have to have X amount of shares. You have to have 100 shares to get into what you call the yellow party. You know how much money that is? Even then, we get invited. We get to go. So there's Buffett with his entourage. Looked like a, you know, 
football team is security detail. We walk through. Yeah, yeah, we get to meet by everybody's god guy. I really don't want to meet the fuckhead. I'm not. Impre- Listen, I dealt with freaking rich, wealthy, oligarch type people my whole life. I mean, I've never been impressed by those type of fucking people. I'm still not. I mean, I used to tell a lot of these people, hey, you want my. I tell Lord when I see him all the time. I know. Hey, Damien, you want my autograph? I'm not impressed. And so I walk through and. I says, well, you know, Mr. Buffett, 2000, he was having a bad year because he wouldn't buy dot-com stocks. And uh, I says, you know what I say about you having a, a bad year? And he's snootier than fuck. What the fuck did me? <laughs> and I says, even Babe Ruth had slumps, you know. I walked off. Kyle's like, hey, 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 he's waving you back. He's waving you back. He's waving you back. Fuck, he's just beaming. He's a baseball guy. So, they take these pictures. They send it to the school framed with me with the arm around, signed by Buffett, hung on the wall. There's also his best buddy in that era, right before Cooley died, had came here with Bill, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett came here. And Alma Harris was the dean there, and they wanted us to go play golf. Clyde Cooley is Clyde Cooley perfect condition. The guy looked so good. He was 68 when he died, but he looked like he was 48. Just flawless. Healthy. He refused to go. He didn't like it. So, I got volunteered. Yeah, there used to be a picture in there of all of us playing golf. And, and you know, I used to always tell my daughters, if I ever become one of those middle-aged fucking geeky-ass golfers, take a nine iron and hit me right behind the fucking ear as hard as you can. I had to go home today about six showers. I knew that Bill Gates is the guy who stole the operating system here. The operating system was invented here. Bruce Bastian, David O. McKay's grandson, Alan Ashton. Bruce Bastian's related to Pfizer Warren. They invented it at the band, BYU. Word Perfect had the... We had to learn Word Perfect. We used nothing but Word Perfect in there. And Novell. My brother was this uh, human resources head dude there. I mean, everybody. It was all the rage, the market. I Omega was here. The guy, kid that was leaking all that stuff to Motley Fool, the first of all, here, going to school here, I knew him. He got busted, him and his dad, they worked out, they were leaking all that. I mean, it was nuts in those days. It's like I talked to what's his name's dad. He was in my class, he was playing football. And he says, yeah, we're all we did, Blanche. He says, you taught the class out there, all we did was the Wattis Lab trade arbitrage uh, derivatives all day, every day. That's all we did. <laughs> I said, yeah. So, I taught the derivative arb class. Lots of sadie kids in my class. So, I teach people how to use puts and calls, strides, straddles, two up, one down, two down. And that's what I taught how to do it, you know. That was my class. I think I had 17 kids in 99. Five of them were Saudi kids. Six of them were Saudi kids. I mean, this is a complex class. It's tough. A lot of kids couldn't wrap their mind around it. I said, no, go move on. Go do something else. So, when 9-11 happened, Clyde Cooley had passed away in November of 99. I was at Comdex when he died, and I called back. I said, Kyle, how's Clyde doing? Haven't you heard? Heard what? He died. You didn't have nothing for him? What the fuck are you doing? You didn't call me? Oh, he was jealous of freaking Clyde. He couldn't make a pimple on Clyde's ass. So, it rolls around, 2000. That year was nuts, right? The election. I remember doing an interview right there. We were saying you should have a television crew. And I was interviewed right there. Well, you know, Bush is ahead by one point in the polls. Who's going to? I said, no, Gore will win. The economy is too strong. There's no inflation. People vote on their wallet. Gore will win. It's because... <laughs> You know, that goes back to that fucking Carvel. It's the economy, stupid. No, it's the ecology, stupid. If Carvel's pink, it fucking stinks. He's a plant. And so, 9-11 happens. I've been in New York. I just got home. We had 14 students. Go ask Baxter. There, I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. When I saw it happen, I was in my big house. I got up here. FBI's all over in here. The secretary's, what the fuck? So I go up to the library. Fuck. It's all over. FBI's everywhere. And 
So Chris, who just retired, or works at Refinex, she retired this week. They're in there. They're passing out flyers already with people's names. I recognize I says, those guys are in my class. So Kyle Madsen's lying for here for years. Kevin, you know they bought puts on the airline stocks. You're the, you teach the derivative of class, the number one school of business. Kyle Madsen didn't even know what a derivative was. I, know, I had to teach him. He says, I'm the guy that identified they bought him. CIA and FBI talk. They were going to hire me to do some forensic accounting, you know, and then they ended up getting rid of it because I remember interviewing. They didn't know what the, I mean, it was so far over their head. Kyle Matson. They bought puts on the airline stocks way out of the money, tight to expiration, you know, for a penny a piece. Sold them for hundreds of dollars. But you ever think that you're the one that taught them how? I'm like, I very well could have. So... Chris is sitting in the reference decks. There used to be a courtesy phone upstairs in the library. She still has her sticker. The FBI gave her. I walk in there and she's the one that called and says, they just came in here. And I was there when they handcuffed him and arrested him. They did an interview right over here, the Saudi contingency, right by the statue. And... I think it was Cassell, one of the news stations. And I says, well, what are you guys going to do? You know, we're flying out of the country. This is before anybody knew that they were, flew all the Saudis out. And that's, you know, if you don't think the United States is fucking completely run by oligarchs, you sure didn't pay attention to 9-11. So, when Clyde's out of the picture, this became a nightmare here. It became a war. I mean, with these pro bootlickers. These lesser professors who were dumb. Dr. Chi resigned. Then, you know, different professors started to get cancer. Kyle Matson, who's a non-smoker, got lung cancer. Now, me and him would always talk because he worked at the University of Syracuse, and I, I'm the anti-nuclear, and I tell him, you do know, gee, the whole place is so heavily contaminated along with Hudson, especially at the University of Syracuse. You know, and he'd argue with me. Non-smoker, he was overweight, but that had another, he was young. He got lung cancer in 2005, dead. His wife, who was a non-smoker, surgical nurse, just a couple of years, lung cancer, dead. You know, that's who I would go back there with Kyle, his kids, you know. So the fight started here in earnest, and I'm defending Clyde Cooley. I mean, it is a war. And, I mean, these guys started to play dirty with me. They started to re pull back on all the promises they made me. And this guy, fuck, I had plenty of money. I didn't give a fuck. I was sick of Wall Street. I was sick of the corruption. I was watching that happen. I'd resign. You know, I'm helping out here, doing whatever. And then Annika died of cancer. You know, a couple of my very close loved ones got leukemia the same year that Clyde Cooley died, and they died. I was distraught. I was just had enough of it all, you know, and I just rejected it all. So here, 2004 or 5, I'm like, I can't do it anymore. These guys became so dirty and so corrupt. So, and so... And as it played out, the professor that took over mine, you can read it up. She forbid the Utah State legislators and students to go see the Dalai Lama when he was here. I mean, this thing became this Chinese supply chain through Childs, through Buffett, and just destroyed it. The testing started to just plummet. I was at the bar over there, and there was a professor from Indiana just a couple years ago drinking beer, and he said, well, we don't get good enough students here. I should have let him have it. You know, I should have just probably kicked his ass. But I let him go on, and finally I told him, hey, hey, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to go back to Indiana. You teach here now. Students can look up the scores. We have five major schools of business. A lot of the guys that resigned here went to Westminster, went to the University of Utah. You know, both Davises are dead. You know, Litchford's dead. I mean, I call it the Wattis Curse. You know, they started to unravel and come up. They've had eight deans, or nine deans since then. It's a fucking disaster. It's an absolute fucking... I mean, it's ranks like last. But now at Break Food, AP breaks the story, just like I've been saying for all those years. Chinese influence points to one place. Utah, unlikely. Weber State School of Business. So they railroaded me. They blackballed me. <laughs> they pulled every dirty fucking trick. They still owe me that first NBA. And I, I told Brad the other day, I'm not even sure I want that first fucking NBA, but 
you know, it is the class of 96, which is the highest exit scores in the history of fucking business school in the history to this day. They ripped it to fucking shreds. I told this India, you need to move back. You don't know what the, these guys are fucking morons out there. They started to hire really lesser professors. Fucking, well, they're actually pitiful. And the scores prove it. From first to worst. So, I'll post all the links. Don't go see the Dalai Lama. You know, and Brad Wilson, who's running for the Senate, he was involved in it, but at least he's apologized. I think John Coltray Curtis was involved. Now, this is important because John Coltray Curtis just spoke right there and told me, I just interviewed him, that we need nuclear. Now, I never planned on staying here. I was getting prepped to go teach it in Austria. And what happened? I was polishing up some IT skills in the two. I got leukemia, as you know. I had open heart surgery. Too. I got the atom bomb disease. I was given too much to live in 2011. It's been a really brutal. Over. I had no intentions by this. And I'm a guru with finance, and everybody knows it around here. But they blackballed the program. They gutted the pro. That was the fucking mission. Now, did Clyde Cooley's death just two weeks before the NBA started? I mean, well, the virus that he got in August. He's teaching right in there. They had to lead him out just like that. And then he was dead by August. I mean, by November. And then the whole nightmare started. You know, the election, 2000, the whole Bush Gore nightmare. Spring. I mean, fuck, what a fucking nightmare. Of course, I'm the anti nuclear. I did the due diligence on the nuclear. Act. You talk construction, why? That's who built all the nuclear. Industry. They merged with GE in 1975. Fucking, you talk construction, beginning the parent. And. The heir, Mrs. D, left a billion dollars in the 1975 or just under a billion dollars. Everything here is named after these war profiteers. And I fought him and fought him. Do not take Buffett's money. I knew what he was up to. I knew what he was doing. <laughs> Love and Buffett. So, interesting that I found this today. I don't even know. I was looking for something else. It's been a nightmare, you know. Charlie just died, didn't he? Eating their C's candy, drinking their Coca-Cola. You know, up there on the stage, that's what they would do. Oh, fuck. Make you fucking sick. Let's slip your fucking suit can, call it. You know, get your fucking credential on. I can't believe I hung this on the wall. I can't believe I still have it. You know, and I have gods of money. You know, but what happened there? Cancer happened. I was uninsured. They could have paid for it. They owe me. They promised me insurance. They promised me a lot of things. I ran this program for five fucking years. You know. They fucked me. They stuck it in me. John Coltrane Curtis. Now this is important. Because Buffett bought. This was his whole plan. Buffett bought Rocky Mountain Power. Which is. Used to be Utah Power and Light. That's our. That's our power company here. Buffett bought it. The reason we're not all sore, the reason we're keeping those dirty, filthy, cold, John Coltrane Curtis, Warren Buffett. He owns it. Warren Buffett has been extremely active in blocking the sun, solar initiatives here, because he owns the coal fire plants in Southern Utah. And his best buddy, Gates, who's doing the terraform and little nuclear, little nuke you never heard of anybody in Cameron, Wyoming. Yes, Buffett owns that. Rocky Mount Power owns that facility. Yeah, him and Buffett, they go pray bridge together, the two scumbags. So, I asked John Coltrane Curtis right there. John, what about you know? Remember, he's a dick. He's he's a punk. Well, he talked to me. He's a dick. And so he's like, hey, "You heard my feet, yeah? You know, I'm cordial with these idiots, these useful puppet idiots. Well, we got to have nuclear, but we need the free market on the free market and nuclear. That's talk about the greatest oxymoron. Talk about hedge a poor fool. Remember, we used to buy the calls and puts at the same time. That's called the straddle." A stripe, a stripe, two pull, up, one down. You know, I mean, it's that simple of a fucking philosophy. It's a no, you can't lose that way. You know, you give up a little bit of the insurance costs, and that's what hedge funds do. It's a no brain. I taught that fucking thing for, here for all those years. What they did to me, I had 30, I had 30,000 shares of Tesla when I IPO. Play back the tape. Remember I kept telling you in 2011? Fuck doing videos every day. The market's crashing. Students, I mean, hey, hey, the market's not going away. Double down in the market. Government. The market was under 10000 in fucking the summer of 2011. I'm like, go all in on Tesla. Go all in on Apple. They're so underpriced, it's fucking ridiculous. I'm a fundamental guy. I was not a techie. 
like Cooley. Clyde Cooley used to call him technical trading a fucking clown. So he hated it. He was a fundamentalist. I mean, he just hammers on PE ratios, on fucking balance sheets. On fucking, I mean, if you can't do hero, you could read a balance sheet. So, remember? I had fucking 30,000 shares of Tesla when an IPO. Play back the tape right here. Remember, they're playing my videos at fucking Berkeley. I remember a kid comes to me and says, you changed me and my grandfather's lives. He says, you know, I talked him into selling all his gold and silver on your advice and going all in Tesla and Apple. We made tens of tens of millions of dollars. I'm like, well, why don't you send me that? These guys could have paid for my show, which legally they should. My bill was one point eight. I had to fork over all my stock portfolio in 2011, which were over a million dollars of Apple and Tesla stock. Play back to What would that be worth today? Well, I'd never held it. You know, I wouldn't hold it. I guarantee I ain't going to hold it. So, you know, you get up to 10, 20, 30 million, you take it. You, know, you don't leave all your profits on the fucking table. I mean, you would have traded it, arbitraged it, you know. I know how to harvest it. I mean, I can fucking hold my stock if I put some real to make money both ways. They could have paid for my $1.8 million of cost. You know? What time? It wasn't meant to be, was it? A lot of stress. It's important. People don't read books. Pocket, please, this is a book. Publish. No, I don't care if it gets 20. It's like when you were young here, going to school in the day, and you're doing research. You had to go to the resource library. By the way, Sandy died of cancer. Her and I went to college together. She went in the resource library for all those years. Well, me and her used to buy heads about Southern Utah. She got a brain tumor recently and passed away young. It's very tragic. Remember you'd research in the research library and hope you found something? And just hope? Somebody out of the goodness of their soul and their heart put it in there. It was hard, hard work. Not like you just do it online. That's what I am. I'm the research library, and I'm a freak. I fought the J-Store. I went to. New I was in New York all those years. I knew Aaron Swartz personally. I mean, I fought the whole corruption. I watched it evolve when they went digital on Wall Street. The CBOE floor. I was such a famous trader. You'd call the fucking CBOE and say, hey. I'd just call them. Say, hey, can you... Oh, hi, Mr. Blanche. How are you? What's your request today? Ah, uh, Connexton. Can you write some fucking 220 calls? What expiration would you like? Julys. And could you get me some August, too? 220s, 225s. We'll see what we can do. They were always there the next day. 100 They knew my voice. I mean, I was that big of a fucking derivative trader. But cancer took care of that. Fucked me all up. You know, but I'm still alive. So many of these guys aren't. Yo, Waters died of freaking cancer. He's the CEO of GE. They were the parent company, Utah Construction of GE. You know, the whole Ponzi scheme that Jack Welch was fucking orchestrating here. You know, I remember talking to Volker standing right here about the Fed. And he told, I remember him talking about Greenspan. And I'm the guy that first started calling it and ran Greenspan. You know, he was huge. Cigars, he was smoking a cigar right here. Fuck, he's about seven foot tall. I think I have a picture with he and I right here. You know, a lot of famous people used to come here, was involved here. So, from first to worst, Buffett did it. You know, we'll cut it off there. Somebody should interview me, but I've been blackballed. I'm way too dangerous and hot to handle. Fucking dirtbags. You know, everybody's all fucking Google about Buffett. Not me. Not me. Don't even like him. Long live the legendary finance professor Clyde Cooley. He was a fucking genius. You know, they changed my grades. They took the my MBA. They fripped my insurance. All illegally. Why? I just told you why. From first to worst. How is that possible? Stay in tune.